Hi, and welcome to this video on bank reconciliations. Before we get started, I'd just like to remind you that you can pause the video at any time, go back over it um, if you don't understand something, and that's the advantage of videos. And if you still don't understand the concepts, you know, feel free to call and speak with an instructor. We're here from 8 in the morning until 7 in the evening, Eastern Standard Time, or you know, log in to your Penn Foster account, click on Contact Us, then select Education and send us an email. We'll be more than happy to answer your questions or help you understand how to do the bank reconciliations. Okay, and as another aside, I'm going to be bouncing around between uh, slides here, so be patient with that. The reason for that is, is when you're doing a bank reconciliation, you're going to have your check register. If you were doing it yourself, on your desk you'd have a check register, you would have the bank statement from the bank, and then you would have a blank page. All right, that you would do the reconciliation on. So uh, I'm going to bounce back and forth between the different slides as we do this. Okay, uh, what's a bank reconciliation about? All right, a bank reconciliation is about making sure that what you have in your check register is the same thing that you have on your bank statement, and vice versa. Uh, anything that isn't on one that's on the other, uh, you need to adjust it. So. If I have a check register, and here's my bank statement, I'm going to look at what's on my bank statement. And anything on my bank statement that is not on my check register, I'm going to put it on my check register. I'm also going to then go from the perspective of what's on my bank statement. Right, I have my bank statement. I'm going to look at my check register. And anything on my check register that is not on my bank statement, I'm going to put it there also. Then I'm going to do the math of for the adjustments for both the check register and the bank statement. And theoretically, when I do the math, I'm going to end up with an ending figure, and both of those ending figures should be exactly the same. If they're not, then something is wrong, and you need to go back over and look at you know the transactions. Maybe you write, wrote an amount that was incorrect. Uh, you know, you did the math wrong, whatever. But the point being is, is that if the ending balances aren't the same, an error has been made, and you need to find that error. You must find the error. It must come out exactly. Even if you're off by one penny, what that means is that, you know, you think, oh, well, maybe it was just a cents adjustment. I just wrote, you know, instead of writing five cents, I wrote six cents. Well, that could be true, but also what could be true is that you had five mistakes and they happened to all net out to that one penny. Uh, so it's important that you get it exactly correct. You're not done until those two numbers match. Um, that's just a fundamental of it. And if you're not able to do that, then you're not doing the reconciliation correctly. All right. Um, another thing. Uh, and this is just a quick aside, a lot of people don't use a check register in their personal account. Uh, today with the internet it's relatively easy to log into your bank account, look at your uh, bank statement, look at your account and see what transactions have occurred. And that's just fine for a personal account, but in businesses, uh, every business has a check register. And the reason for that is um, is that more than one person is handling the checking account. In an office you might have say three people one is doing accounts payable, uh, that person would be making deposits. Another person is doing accounts payable, they're writing checks. Well, how do you know what the balance is in the account if anybody's just doing anything? And that's why you keep the check register in order to know what your running balance is at any given moment in time. Now that third person, remember three people in the, uh, in the office, one doing receivable, one doing payable, the third person would do the reconciliation. All right. That is for security reasons. Obviously, the person doing uh, payables, you know, they could be writing checks to themselves, and if they're doing the uh, if they're doing the reconciliation, uh, they can be embezzling. So you would have a third person uh, do the reconciliation so that embezzlement doesn't occur. Also, if you had say more than one location, you know, maybe you had three different offices. Again. How do you know what the balance is in that account? You don't want to be overdrawn, um, so you keep a central check register in businesses, and at the end of every accounting period or at the end of every month, you need to do that reconciliation. 
uh, the reconciliation does become part of your closing process of your books during an accounting period, but that's another topic for another time. All right, so let's get started here. All right. um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my my statement. Right. So at the top here, I'm going to write cash register, and over here, I'm going to write bank statement. Okay, and divide the page. Right. And remember, what we're trying to do his, here is we're going to start with the beginning balances. Then we're going to have any adjustments that have been made. And when we get down to the bottom, we're going to do the math. And what we do on one side for the check register and what we do on the other side for the bank statement, that ending figure should be the same. If it's not, we've done something wrong. Right, so let's go back to our register and our bank statement. All right now. We need a we need to start with uh, uh, a beginning balance, all right? In this case here, in our check register, we're showing that our uh, register shows we have a balance of six thousand five hundred and eighty-eight dollars and forty-two cents. So we need to put that on our check register side as our beginning balance. So that's six thousand five hundred eighty-eight dollars and 42 cents. Okay. And over on our bank statement, our ending balance is $11,863.02. So that's $11,863.02. Now, uh, as I was writing that, the thought occurred to me. I called these beginning balances because it's the beginning of the reconciliation. But the reality is, is we're using our ending balances here and here to do the reconciliation. We're not starting with the balance at the beginning of the counting uh, at the beginning of the uh, month. We're using the ending balance in the accounts, but um, I'm treating those as my beginning balances for this reconciliation. Okay. All right, so now um, we can do this one of two ways. We can either uh, start out with doing the check register side first, or we can start out by doing the bank, st bank statement side first. Um, I like to do the check register side first um, because it's easier for me to look at the information on the bank statement and then compare it with the check register. Right. So to do this, I'm going to start, you know, there's three areas that we need to look at. Well, deposits, checks, and then charges. And that's the kind of the order that I go in. Right? This is how I personally do it. Right? So here on uh, 3.5, I have a deposit for $2,000. Right? Now, for the deposits, the date isn't that important. Right? As you can see, I have it's two thousand dollars. But when I come up over here to my check register, um, yeah, I have this here two thousand dollars, and it's dated three four. It's not important. Uh, the reason why it isn't the dates aren't as important. I mean, they're used as a guide, but uh, think about this: if it's the last day of the month, the banks will start closing their books sometime in the afternoon. Maybe they might start at one o'clock or two o'clock. Right? Well, if you go into the bank and you make a deposit, let's say at four o'clock in the afternoon, you're going to write in your check register, you know, whatever the last day of the month is, you know, three thirty-one. Right? But the bank isn't, you know, because they've closed their books at one o'clock, they're not going to show that deposit until the next day, you know, which would be the next day in a month. Um, so if you're looking at that. If you're looking at the bank statement, theirs is going to say, you know, like in this case here, three five, but when you actually made it on three four. Okay, so the dates aren't that important, but what is important is the amount. You have to make sure it's the exact amount. So, here I have a, a two thousand dollar deposit, and it's on my check register also. Um, so I'm going to highlight it. That means uh, it's there. It's been taken care of. Right. Let's go on. I have a deposit of two twenty four. Here's that deposit on my register for 224, so I'm going to highlight that. Anything that I don't have highlighted, I'm going to have to make an adjustment for. 
Okay, 389.20. Do I have a deposit for 389? Yep, there it is. So I'm going to highlight it. And EFT Leasing Bakery Department, $1,808.06. I come over here, and obviously it's not there. Right. So that's going to be an adjustment I'm going to have to make to my check register. I'm going to leave it as it is so we don't have to be bouncing back and forth so much and I'll uh, put them all in at the same time. Um, but I'm going to continue on right now. Okay, so my next one is $4,228. That's not on there. Okay, so I don't highlight that. And I have an interest charge here of $56.02. And an interest charge, an interest deposit of $56.02. So I don't have that there. Okay. So what I need to do is I need to put those three on the check register side. Okay. So I'm going to add in $1,808. Zero six. I'm going to add in four thousand two hundred and twenty-eight, and I'm going to add in fifty-six oh two.